from the studios of Farm Journal Broadcast. This is U.S. Farm Report. Welcome to U.S. Farm Report. I'm Clinton Griffiths in for Time Morgan, and here's what we're working on for you. Another week, another USDA report as markets react to falling production expectations for corn. In Tractor Tales, take a ride on a Minneapolis Moline ZTU from Oklahoma. From heat to flooding to drought, weather continues to make headlines. I'm Michelle Brook here in Nebraska where farmers and ranchers are facing back-to-back -back drought years. And in John's world... Ad hoc payments, they're what's happening. And it's a police chase caught on camera. All that and more today on U.S. Farm Report. U.S. Farm Report, presented by Pioneer. What's next happens when experience meets expertise. Pioneer, what's next happens here. Hello and welcome. I'm Clinton Griffiths coming to you from our studios here in northern Indiana. Time is on vacation. Now, let's get to the news that moved the markets this week. Dry weather forcing USDA to make major revisions when it comes to projected yields for the corn crop. The agency releasing new numbers in its monthly supply demand report now calling for 177.5 bushels an acre for corn. That's a four bushel drop from last month after a dry June in many key growing areas. As for soybeans, the agency staying the course at 52 bushels to the acre. Wheat yields are now forecast to be 46.1 bushels an acre, up more than a bushel over last month. For ending stocks, old crop comes in at 1.4 billion, new crop 2.26, old crop soybeans at 255 million bushels, while new crop beans are down 50 million from last month to 300 million bushels. As for wheat, 580 million bushels for old crop, 592 million for new. Those acres transfer over to the balance sheet, uh, yield comes down a little bit. They actually increased demand a little bit. Uh, they reduced export and they reduced um, corn for ethanol, but they raised the feed residual, and that's kind of a head scratcher. Uh, it must be more on the residual side of things, which I tend to think means they overestimated last year's crop. Michelle Rook will take a deeper dive into those numbers coming up in our roundtable discussion. Ahead of the report, we also got some updated news about inflation. The latest consumer price index, now at its lowest point since early 2021. Rising 0.2% last month, now up 3% in June compared with a year earlier. It's thanks in part to lower prices for gas, airfare, used cars, and groceries. Speaking of interest rates, a new report from the Kansas City Federal Reserve shows farm lending is slowing down as rates rise. The volume of new non-real estate farm loans at commercial banks was roughly 15% less than a year ago. Meanwhile, the median interest rate has doubled since the beginning of 2021. Half of all new operating loans in the second quarter saw rates above 8.5%. A tenth of loans were near 10%. Is the red-hot farm real estate market finally starting to cool? Well, Farmers National has just released its mid-year land values report. It says the market entered a period of de-escalation starting in the fourth quarter of last year. It reports the trend continues with fewer properties being offered for sale and market values that are dramatically off the pace that was seen in the first half of last year as interest rates rose and inflation kicked in. Farmers National says the growth in price paid per acre is still positive across the Midwest, which you can see on this chart there in light green. But those increases are now in the single digits instead of the double digits seen in 2021 and 2022. Also making headlines, a week of wild weather. New England hit hard by heavy rains. Vermont seeing two months worth of rain in a matter of days. The state secretary of ag saying because of all the damage to roads, trucks are having a hard time getting to farms to pick up milk. And floodwaters also inundated fields, all of Vermont under a state of emergency. Vermont's governor calling the storm system that caused all of this historic and catastrophic. From one weather extreme to another, from the central U.S. to the southwest, temperatures in the triple digits there. 
Phoenix experiencing several days in a row over 110 degrees. People in the city are being urged to stay inside. While in Idaho, the problem is an outbreak of Mormon crickets and grasshoppers. Here's what it looked like in Nevada a couple weeks ago. While the insects are native to southern Idaho, officials with the Idaho State Department of Agriculture says the pressure is higher than normal. Crickets can eat up rangeland, damage plant growth and seed production. The agency says it has received more than 180 requests for assistance, a 62% increase over last year. And we're keeping an eye on this as Bayer considering spinning off its crop science division. That report is currently circulating online. The report first showing up in the Plateau Brief, a German business news agency. It says the new Bayer CEO, Bill Anderson, is already working on plans to spin off the agrochemicals business by modeling it after Siemens Energy and taking it public. Now, it reports selling the crop science division to a strategic or financial investor is not an option, and it says it could take at least three to four months before a plan is finalized. The world's largest meat packer is hoping to list its shares on the New York Stock Exchange. JBS says it wants to do it in order to better reflect the company's global presence and unlock value for shareholders. Now, shareholders still need to decide whether to accept the idea. The company's CEO believes that by the end of the year, all steps will be completed so the company can start trading shares in New York. Weather has been a major storyline this season. We'll check on what's ahead coming up next. And later, our team of market experts break down the latest USDA report and what it means for prices when the U.S. Farm Report continues.